Is this the camera? Where am I? Right there? Yeah, so, or where do um, I look? So, you should look at me. Yeah, that doesn't. Okay, look at you. Yeah, okay, yeah. yeah. My name is Kit Dobbins. I took a freshman writing seminar my very first semester at Cornell, and my professor told me, don't let your education limit your education, meaning that not to let my classes here at Cornell limit my holistic education because there's so many opportunities outside of the classroom. I really took what my professor said to heart, and so to me, that meant taking two leaves of absence from Cornell, which, while sometimes uncomfortable and a bit of a risk, enabled me um, to spend a semester in Tanzania and to spend a semester in South Africa. He has visited, for someone of his age, he has visited about 20 countries already in the world. But he would not go to places where they you were referring to his comfort zone. But he goes to places where the most atrocious things have happened, to Rwanda, Cambodia. Anytime one experiences or lives among the, the poorest of the poor in our world, it is very difficult to ignore that. Kit is, a, is an intellectual. He likes to articulate the theoretical framework. But for him, that theoretical work has a meaning only if you use it to change something around you. My specific interests I would say would be extreme poverty in the developing world. And that's not to say that there aren't people suffering in our own country in the United States, but I do think that the disparity that one can and that I have uh, had the opportunity to witness, specifically in East Africa, draws a very distinct dichotomy. What I noticed about Kit is he, he definitely cares about a lot of these international issues, poverty reduction, social change. But what I've seen is he's been very intentional about not just you know, sitting in the, the wonderful, nice facilities of a great university and kind of just postulating on what could be or should be done. But he's really been intentional about putting himself in places where he can have experiences, where you can, you know, see what's actually happening on the ground. He comes back from Tanzania. He comes back from an incredible summer in Rwanda uh, or from South Africa. And he brings that experience into his classes when they're talking about poverty or inequality or technology in the third world or whatever the issue may be. I engage in an Africana Studies curriculum to further investigate and think more about the inequalities affecting the African diaspora. He took a course with me, Women and Gender Issues in Africa. There are relatively fewer male students than female who take that course. He took it and uh, he really shined. The paradigm there was more Afro Afrocentric as opposed to the Eurocentric curriculum I was exposed to in high school. He's hungry of knowledge and he doesn't want to learn about things that he has already an idea about. I was challenged in ways that I hadn't been in high school. I was challenged to think about the shape of history and the history that I had been told. He wants to question the received knowledge. Is the perspective I'm receiving the only one or are there other perspectives? At Cornell, there's certainly different trains of thought, but there's also, a, there's always an opportunity to challenge oneself, whether that's physically, socially, or, or intellectually. And I found that in the Africana Studies curriculum here at Cornell. I've been blessed with numerous grants and support from Cornell to travel to Africa, Southeast Asia, and South America. We work to ensure that a constitutional stipulation requiring that every company with more than 50 people uh, include 2% of employees with disabilities actually implement and abide by that law. This affects long-term change in terms of jobs and stability and supporting entire families. When I think about success, I think about sustained and long-term and continued success. For example, I, I've been involved with people using a modified light source in their homes and developing that. But my real dream for those communities is that they're connected to an electrical grid. The real ideal goal is that people are no longer relying upon you or relying upon the projects that you have developed. Kit definitely works really hard. He's a studious guy. 
he, he understands that this place is an opportunity to invest a lot in that. But it doesn't, it doesn't consume his life. You know, he still goes to sports games, he still makes time for people, hangs out, you know, has fun. I think the reality is that there's, you know, over 14,000 of us and everyone has their own, own experience. And so it's impossible to share in every little bit that's going on here at Cornell. It would be hard for me to say that there's, a, that there's things that I haven't missed out on because there is so much going on here. He's a person who, among many other things, has made the most use of this institution. He has, in the best meaning of the term, he's milked it for what it can offer him. He's obviously a very successful, very accomplished person, a high capacity individual, but you know, it takes getting to know him to actually figure that out. And usually you find that out through other people or through seeing him in the newspaper somewhere or on some website somewhere. And you're like, oh, Kit, so you won this prize or you won this scholarship or you were a Rhodes Scholar. And he's like, oh, yeah, yeah, that happened. He's very humble but very powerful in terms of his ideas and he, what he's convinced that he should be doing. It's, you see that contrast, humility and at the same time doing extraordinary things. I've been blessed with the opportunity to attend one of the finest universities in the world. And so with that comes the responsibility to, to take responsibility. He, to me, really represents what the sociologist Max Weber wrote about at the turn of the 20th century. He has a vocation. He has a calling. He has a, he, he has a changing but yet grounded still sense of himself in the world. All I can say is that he will be doing some great thing. And whatever he does, he will be doing it with passion. He is going to be using the roads within the framework that continues to evolve within him, rather than to be bedazzled by the idea that I'm a road scholar. I hope to live to be about 90,000 years old because I want, to, I want to watch what happens with Kit. I'm excited about the Rhodes Scholarship because I think it, it, it opened doors and connections with people who are the leaders in their field, regardless of what that field may be. And I think there's an opportunity for me to learn from them.